the Edigu Mars 3 Ultra 4K resin printer. Let's give it a review. Hey guys, I've been looking forward to this printer ever since Edigu played their guessing game with us a few months back. And I was delighted when Eligu kindly sent me this printer to review for you guys. As soon as the box is opened, it's obvious that we have a very new looking Mars. The cover has been aerodynamically streamlined to reduce drag and improve its 0-60 acceleration time. But as I won't be drag racing my printer, what else have these new looks given us? The base is much more rounded and a little taller than previous models. This could be to incorporate the new secondary light source for improved light efficiency. Whatever the reason, it comes at the cost of the adjustable feet that we saw on earlier models. Both sides have grooved vents for the reasonably quiet fans, and the rear holds nothing but the power socket. That means the front is the busy end of this printer, with what looks to be the same menu screen from the last model, and a USB port, which personally I don't like to see on the front as it can easily get knocked. But there's also something new, the power switch. Now I actually like the idea of a front facing power switch. It saves all that frantic groping and searching around the back. Unfortunately, I don't like this switch. It just doesn't feel nice. It feels cheap. And if I was a betting man, I'd guess the first thing to break on this printer would be this switch. The resin tray has undergone a facelift too. It's still made of reassuring metal, though it's a little deeper. So I would imagine this means it will hold a little more resin. It also has an upgraded FEP, though I've got the feeling this FEP was on the Mars 2 Pro. The tray also has these little lugs that seat snugly atop the base, locating easily with the max level indicator always showing, as the tray can only slide in one way. The build plate is bigger than we've seen before, and that gives us a nicely sized print area. This travels on the tried and true single solid linear rail, the same one as we've seen before. I guess if it isn't broke, don't fix it. But below this, of course, is the bit we're really excited about, the new and improved 4K monochrome screen. Now we've seen 4K screens on Eligus before on the much loved Saturn, but this is a more proper use for a 4K in my opinion. 4K over a smaller area, giving us a screen resolution of 35 microns. Now to be honest, the Mars 2 Pro had an XY resolution of 50 microns. So 15 microns difference isn't too much to brag about. But any improvement in print quality always gets me excited. So how does the Mars 3 print? As is typical for me, I aim to begin with the Amerilabs Town test print. The problem I had was the slicer. Now the Mars 3 comes with a year subscription to G2 Box Pro, and my regulars will know that I'm not a fan of G2 Box. And right now, this minute, G2 Box is the only slicer that will work alongside the Mars 3. Fortunately, this is the Pro version, the professional version, the paid for version. As such, it produces a much better class of PC crashes, blue screen errors, and time wasting computer freezes. Before anyone points the finger at my PC, just remember I'm very happy with it. It copes fantastically with video editing and CAD software, both of which are famous for intensive memory and processing demands. It also copes beautifully with Leechy and has never once crashed. But show it G2 box, and frustration erupts. So, to all printer manufacturers, please note we do not all like G2 box. Some of us prefer other slicers. As such, we do not like being forced to make use of one product over another. 
Now this is very important as we are the ones that buy and use your products. So if you want us to carry on doing that, don't take away our options. If you do, we might just opt for another brand of printer. Eventually I managed to persuade Chitubox to slice my file. I didn't have any Eligu resin to hand, so sorry Eligu, I made use of any cubic grey. I made a guess at settings and was lucky enough to get pretty close I think. Sure enough, the Emela Labs print came out looking very nice indeed. So I decided to try a little jewellery by printing the open source ring. Again this came out wonderfully crisp and clear. In fact, it impressed me so much I decided to be a little naughty. If you saw my very very cheeky teaser video the other day, can you see a difference in these prints? I can, it's about $1100. Oh dear, that was naughty, but let's make this clear. I'm lucky enough to own a Frozen Sonic 4K and when I reviewed it last year, I printed this Frozen Test Print Ring. To me, this stands as a testament to great quality printing at the 4K 35 micron level. So when I then cheekily printed the same ring on my Mars 3, I was not comparing the printers, but I was comparing the prints. As nice as the Mars 3 is, it's comfortably at the lower end of the market, aimed at amateurs like me. The Frozen Sonic 4K is a professional tool, a workhorse built with quality in mind and an appropriate price tag. However, we can see in this early test with a brand new Mars 3, the comparison is a close one. And before anyone says anything, as I know someone will, I've been asked in the past which is the best printer I own, and I haven't changed my mind there. But heck, it's still an impressive print. So I needed to push it a little harder and turn to my buddies at Archvillain Games. Now this guy is a true miniature, standing around 35mm tall. And yet there's still bags of detail on him. It's hard to photograph with the limited equipment I have, but I'm sure you can see it's there. This chap is, on the other hand, an altogether bigger miniature at around 200mm or 8 inches. He's packed with the fine detail we expect from Archvillain Games models. Sure enough, it's a fabulous print. The quality of detail is definitely there. The print still needs tidying up and priming, but you can see all the features and textures of this great model. The Mars 3 certainly seems to have done an excellent printing job. So what do I think of the Mars 3 Ultra 4K? There's a lot of new additions to this printer, but there's a lot that remain the same. The facelift does nothing for me, but I guess it's nice and does make it stand out a little. The front switch location is pleasing, but the switch itself feels a little cheap to me. The Z-Rail is the same one we've seen before, so we know that it works, but do look carefully here. See the slight wobble? Closer inspection with a few grid lines makes this clearer. I'll be 100% honest, I never noticed this wobble until I saw it live on my own preview video. It seemed very slight, but I inspected the printer and found it was sitting on its own power cable. If you look closely, the background moves as well, so I guessed that was the problem and shrugged it off. In hindsight, that was a mistake. When an eagle-eyed viewer spotted the same thing, it began to play on my mind and I thought I'd better double check with the printer sitting flat. It's still moving. And yet, it's the same Z-Arm as the one in the Mars 2 Pro. I gave everything the once over but couldn't find any nuts that needed tightening, etc. I had no choice but to set up my 2 Pro and perform the same test. I don't know about you, but I can't see any wobble. 
ZR Wobble could dramatically reduce printing accuracy, especially if it loosens over time. Now this might just be my printer, but it might not be. All I can do is call upon my fellow YouTubers who've received Mars 3 printers to review and ask them to perform the same test. If this is an issue, I'm guessing Eligu has got some work to do, but let's hope it isn't. Continuing, the plate is new and enlarged, so we have more print area. The resin tray is new and slightly deeper, but maybe there's an anomaly in the shape of it that I hadn't noticed previously. On my cheeky preview video, one of my viewers asked if I'd noticed splashes on the sides of the tray or on the lid. And I have to admit, I have. It's not something I recorded as I thought it was just me being heavy handed. But maybe it wasn't. Maybe this new tank design causes a little splash back. Again, it's something I'll keep an eye on. But in my case, it was tiny, literally just a few droplets and nothing that would put me off using it. So given these concerns, would I recommend the Mars 3? Right now, I'm sorry to say I can't. It's great to see a budget printer with 4K quality and 35 micron resolution, but I'm fearful that my printer will get worse with time. I'm desperately hoping it's a one-off and that all the others are in good order. So until my fellow YouTubers assess their printers, we'll just have to keep our fingers crossed that mine is a dud and the others are diamonds. If mine is the exception, then the printing performance of this machine will make it a pleasure to use. But for now guys, I can offer no other recommendation than this. Wait and see what the others say. So for now, I think we'll call that a finished review. I hope you enjoyed this awkward one guys, take care and thanks for watching.